Hi everyone, welcome back to another week on the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel. So this week we're actually working on this cute little piece right here. You can only see the side of it. It's actually a really cute piece. You can kind of see the shape of it. Um, these little side pieces that it's got. It actually has kind of an, I would say an Asian feel with the shape of it. It just reminded me of sort of an Asian carved chest. Um, but I decided to go a totally different direction with it. And I use this color scheme here that's a little light, a little earthy, some blues and some greens. Um, so this week I'm gonna show you um, actually how to take a color scheme and I'm using it in two different ways. So this is kind of a peek of the other way, but two different finishes in the same color scheme. And I thought that was kind of cool how you can take some of the same colors that you might have in your stockpile and make them more versatile and do different finishes with them. So I'm gonna do that on two different pieces. We're gonna tackle one this week. It's gonna be this little carved chest. I think it comes out really cute. The finish is just so pretty. It has so much depth and interest to it and it just complements the shape of the piece. So you guys hang out and let's get started on this one. Here's where I started on this piece. I picked this up off my local Facebook marketplace. It looks cute from afar, but when you get up close, it needs a lot of work. It had a few dings on the front, so I went ahead and filled those using some wood filler and gave this one a good cleaning, removed all the hardware. Next, I need to give this a coat of primer because it's not a real wood. This is actually a laminate, and I wanna make sure that my paint adheres really well. I'm using Wiseall primer in light gray, and when I was working on this piece, I actually found a little trick that helped me quite a bit, and I went ahead and I cleaned and primed pieces in bulk. So I did about four pieces in one night. It ended up being all of my priming that I needed to do for the entire month, and it was a huge relief because it meant that while that night kind of stunk that I needed to prime all those at one time, it meant I could come out for the next month and just paint and work on pieces and not have to worry about the prep portion. I'm choosing Wiseall primer because it's a stain blocking primer and a gripping primer in one. So it's become really the only primer that I need to use. And the light gray I can use under whites, under light colors, or under dark colors. So it's a really universal primer that I like laying on. After two coats of my primer, here is where I landed on my piece. It is now ready to go ahead and start laying some paint onto. I told you guys in the intro that I'm actually using a color scheme that I already used on another piece of furniture, and I'm gonna link the video for that piece in the description here. Um, but I wanna show you how to use those same colors in sort of a different finish. So what I'm starting out with is a little bit of um, Annie Sloan paint, and this color is called graphite. It's a deep, rich gray. I'm gonna slowly get lighter as I go down to the bottom of my piece and work in some lighter colors. The next color that I'm working in is called Aubusson Blue, and it's this nice rich teal blue. Uh, Aubusson Blue and Graphite actually make the prettiest color mix. That's a great combo to use together. I'm using my Klingon brushes here. These are a synthetic bristle brush, and I'm using sort of a swirling motion. So this piece wasn't super smooth to begin with. I did have to do a little bit of repairs on this, so I'm adding a little bit of texture to my paint with my brush strokes. It's not an overt texture, not enough to cover up this medallion that's on the front of the piece, but it's gonna be just enough to hide any imperfections that were already on my piece. Annie Sloan Paint does these beautiful textured finishes really well. I love adding a little bit of texture to my brush strokes using her paint. The next color that I'm gonna add um, after my Aubusson Blue is gonna be Chateau Gray. And while it's called a gray, it's actually a beautiful sage green color. By swirling my colors together as I go down, and I'm just using one brush, so I actually create these in-between colors on my brush, and they start creating on my piece. So this is a really pretty way to do a blend, is just using one color and letting your brush get a little bit muddy.
My last color that I'm using on the bottom is Annie Sloan Old White. And from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reverse my order and start working my way up. And I'm gonna carry the colors up a little bit higher here. Um, and now they're gonna start overlapping on some of the colors that are underneath. And I'm gonna start creating this sort of muddy and mottled mix between the two. My paint is somewhat dry, but I didn't let it dry before I started working my way back up to the top. And that allows my paint to reactivate a little bit and pull into some of the other colors. It actually creates this really cool look. So from here, all I'm gonna do is reverse the order and I'm gonna carry them up a little higher than I did on my first round. Let those colors mix on my piece. I'm using the same swirling motion with my brush. And let's go ahead and work my way back up to the top on this. You can see here what I mean as the colors start to reactivate the color underneath and pull into each other, I start getting this really moody and mottled effect. So don't be afraid to layer your paints. Don't worry about letting it dry. You can create some of these really cool looks by just playing with the paint. I continue to swirl my colors into each other until I had nice kind of smooth, even transitions in between the colors themselves. I also made sure that the color that I was putting over top was slightly lighter than the one underneath. When you're layering paint, you want to do this. Make sure you have contrast in between your layers. So I'll usually put the darker color underneath and then a lighter color above, and that gives me some contrast. If I were to put my darker color over top, I'm more than likely going to cover the color underneath, and that's not what I want. I want to be able to see them both. Once I liked the look of my layered effect, I'm gonna go ahead and let this coat dry. And then I've got another technique that I'm gonna add over the top of this. I really liked all the carvings that were on the front of these drawers and I wanna bring that out. So what I'm gonna do here is I loaded up my Klingon S50 brush with a little bit of my old white paint and I'm just gonna do a very light dry brushing over the top. And what dry brushing is, is I'm gonna pick up the very tiniest amount of paint just onto the tips of my bristles. I'll lay it off either onto a cloth or a rag on the floor and then I'm going to lightly brush over the top of my paint. Once my dry brushing and my paint is nice and dry, I'm going to come back and over my raw paint, I'm going to add a little bit of wax detailing over the top. I'm just taking a very soft wax brush loaded with the tiniest bit of black wax, and I'm going to lightly shadow it around areas that would normally get finger wear. This is going to be in the crevices, along the edges of the drawers, and around any of my hardware. This shadowing takes very little wax, so once I've got it on there, I'm going to buff away any excess, and then I'm going to go ahead and spray this with two coats of clear coat. Annie Sloan Clear Coat sprays beautifully. I really love using it. It's nice and durable. And here is the final piece once I'm done. I love the layered paint effect. The dry brushing over the top really softened it, gave it this nice mottled look. So what do you guys think? Check out the other video in this color combination and let me know which look you prefer using these colors. I staged this one just using some baskets and some natural pottery just for a really earthy look. 
And you guys can find links for everything I use in the description for this post. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube, and on my website at brushbybrandy.com. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll click that subscribe button for more weekly tutorials right here on the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel.